Welcome everyone. This is Acid Roots. We've got another Game Boy Let's Play for you, and this is the illustrious Super Mario Land 2. So I'm gonna let you know right off the bat there's not a lot to this game. If as you can see there's probably only 25, 26 stages. So naturally that's less than the Nintendo Super Mario Brothers. But this is still a better game than Super Mario Land, and I'd probably recommend it by a landslide every time. So, but what this game wants to be is it wants to be the handheld Super Mario World. And this is basically the last Mario platformer for about almost 15 years. So, naturally, I know the buzz is all on. Super Mario Maker right now, but we can't forget about the ones that Nintendo did themselves. Because, I mean, you know, as much as you may not want to notice it, there was a difference between 1992 and 2006. So, they changed, they made the DS, they made Pokemon, they were, they had made the Wii, there's just so many shits that they went through. This was early stuff. So you may notice that the, the tunes in this game are a little bit different. And that's because this game was made by the creator of Metroid. So he is no longer living, but he was with Nintendo until about 1995-96 or so. And the last, the last thing he gave Nintendo before he departed was the Game Boy Pocket. He made the Game Boy. So he was, you know, if you're wondering, you know, people give the creator of Mario a lot of credit, but he was someone that did a lot for Nintendo as well. I think he even made Kid Icarus. He made Icarus, Metroid, the Game Boy, Super Mario Land 2, the Virtual Boy. He just did a lot of stuff. So, but obviously, you know, as it stands today... I know that a lot of stuff is just more ready. But this game is, you know, this game is pretty much simple as ever. I think it's really intended for the younger set, but still fun. It's a nice little cruise. Uh, I'll let you know if that pissed me off right there. You're gonna find like these um, screw, you know, these fuck you over blocks several times. But um, so I'm gonna say, yeah, I own this game. So I I own this game. I got this game somewhere in 1998 or 1999, and I beat it when I was 10. So I had beaten it. I just played it like obsessively. There was just one summer I was out and about, and I beat this game. And really, I don't know how I ended up buying it. I mean, the thing about it was, was when I was 10, the Game Boy was really beginning to wear thin. The PlayStation was, of course, in its heyday. You know, you had games like Gran Turismo and Tomb Raider and Final Fantasy VIII, those sorts of things, but and, and Legacy of Kain, but the Game Boy stood strong because Pokemon had hit us about, I'd say, March, April of 1999 is when it really started to happen. Because that was the thing, I mean, the, the Pokemon show launched with the game and it came out in fall of 1998 but they weren't talking about it until 1999 so it was just one of those late bloomer type things and naturally the game boy was revitalized and it sold like hotcakes for the rest of the year 1999 and i think even into the year 2000 now really this doesn't happen extensively and, you know, if I were to talk about my history with it, I actually do not remember Pokemon that well. 
I was just thinking, well, because I didn't know what anime was in 1999. I just thought it was like, you know, what is this? So, you know, the show was on and that sort of thing. I'm not saying, oh, yeah, well, you know, anime and stuff, but I just didn't know what to expect from it. And, um, yeah, I mean, the games, I mean, they were just all over the place, really. I mean, when it came out, it just hit, you know, it hit places, you know, there was the trading card game, and then there was the video games, and then, you know, everyone was doing the trading with the monsters and that sort of thing, but, um, you know, Mario was overtaken, and, and so, I think it was, you know, there was, a, I remember hearing somewhere that they said, in the 1990s, Mario was more recognizable than Mickey Mouse, and I'm pretty sure for a short period of time, maybe between the years 1999 and 2002, Pikachu was more recognizable than Mario. And, you know, just understanding that it did take over culture, it was on, you know, magazine covers, I think it might have even been in Time Magazine, it was just all over the place, and... So, that was sort of the thing, and that was about the time when, you know, of course, here I am playing Super Mario Land and shit. So, naturally, I, I the first Pokemon game I got was Pokemon Blue, but we'll talk about that more, and I know it's weird to be talking about Pokemon, but it has to do with this, and, you know, we'll get more into that. So, yeah, I just remember, alright, subscribe for more fun.